going without food can significantly improve our health. According to recent studies, fasting can not only help us lose weight, but reduces the risk of cancer, heart disease, and Alzheimer's, and can help us live longer. Scientists at USC's Longevity Institute, led by Dr. Walter Longo, discovered fasting, typically for at least three days, throws our bodies into repair mode, fixing problems within our cells and minimizing DNA damage. All because fasting slows the production of the growth hormone IGF-1. The problem with fasting, of course, is it's very hard. The good news is Longo and his associates discovered a diet that tricks the body into thinking it's fasting while still eating food. In his new book, The Longevity Diet, Dr. Longo recommends this five-day fasting mimicking diet three times a year and describes what we should be eating the rest of the time to live healthy well into old age. Lori Johnson, CBN News. Well, Dr. Walter Longo joins us now, and we welcome you to the 700 Club. Thanks. I, fasting has been around forever, but, you know, going without food, being hungry, feeling like your, your energy has been depleted, how do most people respond when you talk to them about fasting? Yes, uh, people don't, don't like to fast. Uh, uh, then again, I think uh, when they do fast, they feel a lot better. And, uh, you know, it's not just about weight, but it's also about... Uh, rejuvenation and killing off uh, damaged cells and damaged components of cells and replacing them with younger ones, right? So also at the brain level, they, they, they say, I feel a lot clearer. Yes, that, that is true. Whenever I've done fasting, I do feel like your brain just kind of comes awake. You have something that is a diet that mimics fasting, kind of tricks our body into thinking we're fasting, and it does some remarkable things. Talk about that, if you will. Right. So. They came from our, our studies of the genetics of aging and, and really connecting components of the diet with genes. Mm -hmm. Once we understood uh, the connection between certain ingredients, for example, proteins that are contained in the diet, they activate something called TOR, S-cis kinase, and sugars in the diet activate something called PKA. So once we made the connection, then we could develop a, a diet uh, that would, people could eat and uh -huh. be fairly normal, a diet, but give them the same effects or very similar effects as they would get if they were just drinking water. So you recommend that we should do this fasting mimicking diet three to four times a year? And why that timing? It depends. I recommend uh, between once a month to twice oh. a year, right? So if somebody's obese and they have high cholesterol, blood pressure, etc., mm -hmm. they probably need to do it once a month. And of course, this has to be done with the doctor's uh, uh, recommendations uh, under doctor's supervision. And if somebody is instead is very healthy, uh, somebody might be 35 years old, exercising, having a great diet, everyday diet, then they probably need to do it a couple of times a year. So talk about what the everyday diet should look like if, we're, if we really want to have health benefits, because you're talking about the mimicking diet either once a month or at least two times a year. So what about the rest of the time? How should we be eating? Yes. And, and by the way, let me just uh, first say the, the fasting mimicking that was tested clinically in a randomized study at USC and showed improvement in cholesterol, blood pressure, uh, triglycerides, uh, and risk factors for cancer and cardiovascular disease. Um, but then uh, the everyday diet, it, it, I, I base it on something I call five pillars of longevity. Mm -hmm. and, and the pillars include uh, studies of large populations, uh, studies of centenarian population. What about the, the people in Okinawa, Japan, or Loma Linda, California, mm -hmm. that have record longevity? What do they eat? And this, this diet uh, essentially is a pescatarian diet. So it's a, um, a low protein, uh, vegetables plus fish. So fish maybe a couple of times a week. That seems to be the ideal diet if you look at all these uh, different pillars. So then there is the 12-hour fast that you talk about that's really a daily regimen that can make a difference in our lives as well. It's between dinner at night and breakfast in the morning. Right. What does that do? Well, um, that, that's not really a fast. That's what people have always done, right? I mean... Well, it, some it, of us snack. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. that. And I think some of the snacking uh, habits uh, came from this idea that we need to eat five, six times a day, right? So people may get to 8 p.m. 
and have only eaten three times, and they, they think, well, the doctor told me I should eat five times, so maybe I got a couple more. <laughs> and in fact, I should have a couple more uh -huh. to be healthy. Um, and so that's not a good idea. And so in the book, I talk about going to two to three times uh, a day, uh, uh, meals, two to, two to three meals a day. And so if somebody's overweight or obese, it's probably good to go to breakfast plus lunch or breakfast plus dinner and then a snack. Uh -huh. uh, you know, let me say a hundred calorie snack, uh -huh. healthy one. Uh, of course, if somebody's underweight, uh, then, then they can stick with sure. the three to five meals a day. Um, so, so yeah, th that's, that's a, a good uh, uh, way to do it and keep it within 12 to 13 hours. Not much longer, not much shorter. Uh, both longer and shorter are associated with problems. Um, and so naturally, if you look at these people that live very long lives, they tend to do that. They mm -hmm. stick within, say, 11 to 13 hours a day of food and consumption. It's not a fast exactly, but it is going without food. So what's the right way to start the day at the top end of that after you fasted all night and you haven't eaten? And most studies suggest that uh, a lot of people uh, skip breakfast and those that skip breakfast uh, tend to have higher mortality and higher cardiovascular disease. So it's, it's uh, for whatever reason, it's good to have breakfast. Mm -hmm. And um, and so again, don't go much past the 12 hours. So if you have dinner by 8 p.m., uh, then try to have breakfast uh, by Around 8 a.m. in the morning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a fascinating work that you've been doing, and the information is amazing. It's called the Longevity Diet. Who doesn't want to read that? You can get it wherever books are sold, and I think you'll find it fascinating as well. Very doable. Thank you so much for being with us. Great to have you here today. Thank you.